Okay, so let's go ahead and try the um, problem that I had to rush through in class. So this was that last problem on your practice quiz, right? And um, basically it was a fairly um, simple problem cloaked in a bunch of information, right? So really what we had are these two um, these two bar electrodes that had arbitrary orientation with respect to one another, uh, sort of like this, and um, a bar electret is just like a bar magnet except it's you know electrical instead of magnetic so it has an electric polarization um, associated with it. And I told you to go ahead and model these um, two bars as um, as dipoles. So that means that we're given um, two electrodes um, and they're of equal moment P and they have um, uh, a relative orientation theta and there's some distance away and we can call that distance whatever we want I don't recall what I told you oh, let's call it s for separation okay and what I wanted you to find was um, what angle they'd like to rest in. So what what relative orientation is stable? Um, to do that first, I was going I was helping you out by telling you first to find the torque on um, one of the magnets or not magnets electrodes. Excuse me. As always, bear with me, it is past 11 and I will wake up at 6 unless I wake up earlier. Um, and B, uh, the critical angle. Or not the, excuse me, not the critical angle, the staple angle. Which happens to be a critical angle. Okay, so, so that's all we really need to do. Um, so, uh, the concept here, if we want a concept, we can just say, uh, dipole interactions. Pretty simple. Um, for this problem, um, since it was on the quiz, uh, I do ask you to do a setup. And I do ask you to do a drawing. And actually, the setup on this problem is critical. Well, it's not critical, but it's um, if you want to get done with this this sort of problem in the 15 minutes or so that you should be getting it done done with it in um, setting it up well is important. And the thing that's really the um, key to all that is that you decide that one of these um, two electrodes, which we're modeling as a dipole moment one of these guys is just going to lie along the z-axis in the plus z direction. So um, if we have our coordinate system like this, right, we just want our um, dipole moment to be situated here at the origin and pointed in the plus z direction like that. Right? So that's, that's our dipole moment there. Nice and easy. So the first dipole is at the origin. Pointing in the plus Z direction. Okay. And then the second dipole, we have to move over here that distance, right? S. So this, uh, this distance here is S. And then we've got another dipole that's perpendicular in this sort of way. And let's see if we can make it work like that. And let's try.
try to trace in the plane that he's in to make it sort of obvious, at least as obvious as we're going to get here, that he's perpendicular to this, right, to this axis. So he, the second dipole on the y-axis uh, pointing in the xz plane. Okay, so that's that's pretty simple there. And then it's hard to see here, but this is what we're going to want to use for our, for our angle theta here. Okay, so we've got one pointed in this direction. And if we draw this in three dimensions, the other one is pointed in this direction. Like that. And, you know, that's our angle theta. That's what we want to, that's the thing that we're really, really investigating is this angle right here. Okay? So we've got that, um, you know, we have vectors. Again, um, this is something that we put in the, uh, that I put in here mainly because, um, you know, that's one of the things I want to test you on to see if you're actually getting it, if you're really, really understanding um, how to set up set up a problem like this with the vectors and so forth and so on. Obviously for such a simple problem it's not really necessary, um, but you have to get used to it with simple problems where you know what the answer is supposed to be, um, so that when you get to really, really complicated problems, which isn't going to be that far away in the future now, I mean you're juniors or seniors now, um, Pretty soon, if you if you are going to do math, you're going to do it in grad school, or you're going to do it at work, and you're going to have to be very, very careful and do things right, and uh, just make sure that you know exactly what's going on all the time, right? So we need to, you know, basically look at our two uh, dipoles. So we'll call our first dipole one. So its position, x1, is just zero, right? That's the origin. Uh, our symbol for the origin is zero with a hat on it. Um, or, or we could do the um, curly, curly O, that's fine. I love the curly O, but it's not really a vector. Curly O's are not vectors. So, and for our other guy over here, we can call him two unless you're a computer scientist, in which case you can call them zero because we don't have anybody, any zeros running around here. And that's off at S in the Y hat direction. So everything's going all right, and we're actually ready to um, more or less solve the problem at this point. Um, you know, we need a strategy. We always need a strategy. We need to know what we're, what we're going to do. Um, First, uh, we just write our field from the book um, or from your card because you're going to have a quiz. So something like the field from a dipole is something that, you know, you probably should put on that card. Um, and then we'll have to switch the um, coordinates because right now what we're, and we have to do that because right now we're using um, Cartesian coordinates in the book. The um, what they give you is in polar coordinates. That's actually the reason why we put this one, which we're going to use as a source, um, as on the z-axis pointing upwards. Because if this guy's on the z-axis pointing upwards, then as a source, um, basically we can use spherical coordinates and say, since this is our only source, um, we can just use that equation in the book. Otherwise, we have to, you know, transform everything and do all that other fun stuff. And in the end, all those transformations would mean if we chose to use this guy, all those transformations would mean that basically we end up with the same situation. Um, so may as well just start with that situation. Okay, so we want to write a field and we want to switch our coordinates. 
and then uh, we need to calculate the torque. Right, and calculating the torque, remember, is just N is equal to P cross E. Um, and after we calculate the torque, uh, we're going to want to go ahead and, um, let's give me, myself a line or two more than that. Um, because this is the part that does a lot of math. Um, then we'll, we'll want to find, um, what should we find? We should find, we want to find our, our stable angle. So we want to find the um, magnitude of the torque and set it equal to zero. All right, and then we just solve for theta c, and I'm just going to argue qualitatively if it's a maximum or a minimum. That's all I think we really have to do. So first of all, we write our field. So our field is equal to E um, P over four pi epsilon naught, um, one over R cubed, uh, two cosine theta, um, R hat plus sine theta, uh, Z hat. Or, well, actually, theta hat we have to use, theta hat, okay? And if we switch to Cartesian coordinates, um, it gets pretty complicated, but if we're, um, if we're assuming that everything has to be on the y-axis, then, um, then here we're going to say that uh, theta is equal to 90 degrees and we could worry about phi, but phi doesn't show up in there. So we have P over four pi epsilon naught. Um, R cubed is S cubed, right? We said the distance here is S. And <clears throat> in the R direction, we have no field. Uh, in the theta direction, and the theta, theta is starting this way and coming down here and coming down here. So it's straight down right now. Um, so we've got everything we need in the theta direction, that's just the minus z direction. Right. So we've got this guy in the minus z hat direction, and that's what we need to use to calculate the torque. And calculating the torque is n is equal to, okay, so we need um, p times the uh, direction of, of this guy, and uh, and now we have a different theta actually, so so that was a bad way of, um, I should have used alpha or some other letter, but this theta is different from that theta, I'm sorry. Um, so what direction is this pointing in? Well, if, it, if this was zero, it would be straight up, so that would be, um, cosine theta in the z hat direction um, minus um, or yeah, plus would be fine sine theta in the x hat direction and we're crossing that with the field in the z hat direction going straight down um, which is p over 4 pi epsilon naught 1 over s cubed, there's a minus sign there in the z hat direction. Ah, so that's a really nice and easy cross product because this is zero, z cross z is zero, and x cross z is minus one, right? Um, because that's anti-cyclic. So we end up with um, p squared over four pi epsilon naught, um, one over S cubed times 
times sine theta in the y hat direction. And that means that the torque is around this axis, um, this is y axis. So it's around the y axis, so the torque is keeping this guy in the xz plane, which is what we'd expect. Um, this basically gives us, gives us the magnitude of n. We're very, very lucky. Right? Or maybe we're not so lucky. Maybe this is exactly what I planned. But um, we're very, very lucky in that. Um, so we want to set that equal to zero and solve for theta. Right? So um, in this case, all this other stuff we can't do anything with. So we say um, sine theta is equal to zero, which means that theta c is equal to either 0 degrees or 180 degrees. Okay, so that's pretty basic. And so we can look at it in um, a couple of different ways, but basically, um, you know, we, I'm already, I've already said that the field's pointing down here, right, which means that this thing's going to want to point that way. Um, another way is you can look at this torque you can say, see here at this in this direction, it has no um, has nothing. It doesn't care. So if this is x and this is z. Here at this point, you know, if the um, dipole was pointing there, it wouldn't do anything. If he's pointing here, he's going this way. It doesn't do anything here. That's why these two are stable. Is that is that you know that's the directions they're go they're going. And this guy over here, he's going that way. So these guys are kind of pushing him in towards this point. And if he was out here a little bit, he would be moving over towards that point. So, and getting here, he goes to that point. So this is our stable um, direction. So our stable um, theta is 180 degrees. Zip, zap, zoom. All right, so that means you are now all ready for your quiz on Friday, right? And um, there's not going to be any worry, right? You're not going to have any sort of um, stress. You're just going to come in, you're going to take the quiz, you're going to do good, and everything's going to be great. So since I've got that kind of faith in you, I know you have to have that kind of faith in you too. So I'll see you then. Bye now.